it's time to unbox some cool consignments. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Brady reached out to me. He said, I've got a couple of guitars I would like to sell on consignment. Taking photos, advertising, it's not my deal. I know you'll do a good job. Do you offer these services? To which I said, yes, I do. Although typically it's not worth it unless the guitar is like $3,000 or higher. Because you know, shipping it around, reverb needs paid, I need paid, PayPal needs a cut. But let's go ahead and check out these guitars. So our first one here, some sort of a 90s Gibson USA case. Now don't worry, all these will get a separate review and demo. This is just kind of a, let's make sure everything arrives safely unboxing and just to kind of tease you. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, feel free to reach out. But let's see what is in case number one. All right, that looks like a custom shop classic to me. So we've documented a few early Les Paul classics, but there is such a thing as a custom shop produced classic. The first thing I noticed taking this thing out of the case, it's got a ridiculous top carve to it. Look at how deep that dish is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's got a pretty sweet quilty top. This really reminds me of something Slash would play. Our inlays are also slightly greened over. Check out our headstock. It says classic on the top, so that tells us it's mid-90s. Looking on the back, yep, we can confirm that, 1995. We've got a little bit of a chatoyant effect on the back, but with some cool wood grain. As far as our condition goes, it looks like we've got like a ding right there, some scratches. I would probably call it, what, a 7 or an 8 on a pretty aggressive scale. I mean, we've got some buckle worming back here, so I can't wait to fully document this one, because that is a model we have not talked about on the show yet. But now let's go ahead and see what's in box number two. Well, it looks like we're taking a trip back to the 70s because that's the style of case that they used before the chainsaws came out. I guess something to keep in mind, they still use this style of case. Even after the chainsaws appear, they just become a little bit less common. So let's see. Ooh, oh yeah, I'm excited to review this one. So I've had one of these before, but it didn't get a review. This is that Pro Deluxe that we keep talking about. It is stock. With the factory P90s, you get the ebony fretboard. It is beautifully aged with that kind of ambered over clear coat, making the binding look extra standout-ish. It's very tuxedo vibes. This one's not routed for a Floyd Rose. <laughs> but I was really curious about the weight, because the one I had was a boat anchor, and I see a lot of people say that, and honestly, this one's not too bad. So once again, we will see a full review and demo on this, but it looks like we even have a little shop sticker on the back of this one. Serial number takes it to 1977. And overall, I'd say the condition's not too bad. About an eight. Got something shaking around in there. It might just be the grounding plate. But some of these marks on the back, I feel like they should polish out. And ooh, extra special treat. We've got case candy. But oh no, this is where the warranty card goes. Somebody kept that in their wallet. But hey, having that is fun anyway. But package number three is where I think things are going to get more exciting. He's going to ramp up our Fender Friday segments because we've got three unusual Fenders. First off, this case, whoa, <laughs> it messes with my eyesight. It's even messing with my camera a little bit. It's like this whole black and white pattern. It reminds me of the Pale Moon series guitars, but it's by Fender. Let's see what the guitar looks like. Hopefully it's not matching. Uh, okay. Some sort of a surf green Telecaster. I'll have to do some research to see what's going on with this one. It is a Fender Custom Shop. I like that the whole mint green pick guard matches the body. Kind of gives it this faded look. You can especially see that in that far away shot here. It's got a pretty nice chunky neck to it. I would say a very thick C, almost a U shape right up here. Then it almost transitions into nearly a soft V by here. That's interesting. Like some of the shoulders slope away. I think after a light wipe down on this one, I would say somewhere between nine, nine and a half if we had to put it on a scale. Looks like we've got a little bit of a stand rash. Wow, stand rash on a fender? <laughs> that must mean this is a true nitro finished one. But it is custom shop built. And according to our COA, it's a 63 style. But now, what do we have in package number four? We've got a brown style fender case with the gold hardware. Pop it open and see what's inside. Ooh, we're going into the relic territory. So this is like a really cool hot orange Stratocaster. So it looks like we're gonna have like some sort of a silver base coat and you can see areas where it's been worn through, but that gives you that metallic nature to the orange finish. So certain areas are dark, the other ones are light. I actually like this one a lot, that's pretty cool. Especially with the lightly aged hardware, like it's not over the top. But then let's check out that headstock. Matching. And this must be a nitro finish too, because I can see some finish checking now. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, yes. Wait till you see the neck. <laughs> we've got some flame figuring back here. Like, it's not the heaviest flame neck that we've ever seen, but it's got enough to give it character and a lot of wood grain. Nearly reminds me of ash wood grain on the back, but this is also a custom shop. Yeah, I think this is going to be the first one I document out of this collection because that's a lot of fun. I like it. And you know what? For a Stratocaster, this has got a really big baseball bat neck. That's an awesome feature for a Stratocaster. Looks like it's a 2012-1960 reissue. But now we've got two left tonight. Let's go ahead and see what's in this box. It appears to be some sort of an aftermarket case. So is it a, like a cool parts caster or something? Or what are we working with? Oh, ooh. Would they call it Inca Silver? I'm not exactly too sure, but it's kind of like a dusty brown finish. But then we've got some sort of a racing stripe over here. Must be some sort of a signature model. Let's go ahead and take it out and feel how it is. Got a decent neck to it as well, but not quite as chunky as that 1960. But apparently this is one of many John Mayer signature Stratocasters. So the thing to know about these is he's with PRS now. So these older ones have kind of shot up in value. And he was telling me this is kind of a rarer one. Honestly, I don't know. Sometimes having a guy who doesn't know a lot about it is the best way to get a better feel of how the guitar actually is. Is it worth paying the premiums yet? Or is it just people being nostalgic over the original brand he was with? But I think this one should be fun. Got his signature decal on the back side of the headstock. It reminds me of like a football helmet, but with like a desert sand vibe to it. Interesting, no backplate stock. You don't even have the holes for it. I love the fretboard on this one. Nice and streaky in a good way. And besides one missing string, this one appears to be in pretty clean shape. I don't see anything right away that stands out to me. So we'll see this one in a couple of weeks. But again, if you're a big Mayer fan, you want to get it before the review comes out, feel free to hit me up. And now we've got one last one tonight. Oh, we've got something interesting on the case says Wildwood Spec. So that means this was initially sold by Wildwood Guitars. I like those guys. I bought a couple of guitars from them recently. Some of those limited edition high-end ones. Like, I think that's where my Adam Jones Flying V came from, if I remember correctly. This is one of their limited edition ones. I'll have to do some research into what makes this one special as far as other SGs. Maybe it's just because it's like really heavily aniline dyed rather than just a cherry red color because we got super binding bleed over here, but that's just to be expected. As far as the neck, big for an SG, but not like huge baseball bat. It still has a little bit of a flatter profile to the back, but it's super rounded at the same time. So kind of a in-between neck, but definitely more towards the big side if that's what you're looking for. Man, I used to think all SGs were just blade thin necks, but you can find these cool little limited edition runs that buck those tails. Pretty clean condition just needs to be dusted off a little bit, so I think we'll be all right on this. Nice wood grain on the back. But now let's get to some boxing tails. This packing story has a fun little story behind it. So this ended up selling on Reverb, and we haven't seen this on the show in a while. This is part of the Midtown series, so even though it looks like a 335, it's more so like a chambered out Les Paul in a roundabout way. You can check out the full review and demo for more. But Joanne purchased this. She said that she's 70 years old and mainly an archtop Gibson girl, but she likes the fact that this thing is a masquerading Les Paul that looks like the other guitars that she enjoys, but she just recently found Found the channel and gets a monthly guitar budget that the government calls social security. <laughs> so she thought she would give this a try as she just recently discovered the channel and loves watching it as well as Philip McKnight because she likes to learn a whole bunch of stuff about the guitars that she loves. So Joanne, I hope you enjoy your new guitar. These limited edition, you know, quilt top flamey versions, I think they're sleeper models. They're just so gorgeous and I really love the aqua blue one as well. They don't show up to the market as often as all the other Midtowns. Next, we need to say goodbye to this awesome guitar. So our story here is David, the guy who does a lot of the forwarding services with me. He had found this at a pawn shop. Now, it wasn't a steal of a deal by any means, but he was looking for one of these because he likes the Beatles, but he's been buying a lot of guitars, right? So he decided that he would rather have a three pickup Black Beauty. And I tried to advise him against that because after I cleaned this thing up, set it up a little bit, 
I review a lot of guitars every year, but there's maybe a handful that stand out as like exceptional players or they have a certain quality to them that's just fantastic. And this is one of those. And you can always tell when I really like a guitar in my reviews because it just naturally comes out. But he decided he would rather have the three pick of Black Beauty, but that's okay. This is actually going to the guy who purchased the NAM Show SG. But the buyer joked, hey, don't think I'm gonna start buying a guitar from you every week. This one just happens to speak to me. And hopefully the three pick of Black Beauty, I help them find will come close to this. I mean, they're very different guitars, but this thing, I understand the market now. So time to get it off to California. So, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek of what the next month and a half might have in store for us, as far as some reviews and demos go. If you've got a guitar that you'd like to consign with me, feel free to reach out via email and we can talk about it. But otherwise, we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.